MMA stance can vary a lot. It's obviously going to depend on your striking preference, your wrestling preference. As a one size fits all, we kind of want to be in the middle. Our stance doesn't want to be too long, where it's hard to shift our weight, and it doesn't want to be too short, where we're not dynamic and we can't move around. So about in the middle, our feet want to be about shoulder width apart and shoulder width forward and backwards. The front foot is always pointing forwards towards my target. I don't want this creeping sideways where I can get leg kicked and I can't shoot forwards. So the front foot is always pointing forward, generally right at the person we're fighting. The back foot, about 45 degrees. I've got a little bit of an angle. And I should always be able to push off of that foot. And as you can see, there's a bit of a, a gap in between my legs. Too much in line, again, I'm starting to creep sideways. I've, I've not got a good angle for kicks or defending kicks or takedowns. So there's a little bit of a gap anywhere I travel, that should pretty much stay. With the hand position, again, it's gonna vary from person to person. As long as it's head high, I'm not too fussed. The elbows can stay tucked in. We don't wanna to flare too much like this. I'm not a big fan of the hands being too close. I think it's an invitation to be hit. I like it a little bit more out. As long as it's head high, I'm not too fussed. And I much prefer the hands opening out a little bit like this. When people close the hands like this, it makes it very hard to be defensive and parry and, and do other sorts of things, okay? So the hands are open a little bit, head high, I have good movement. I can always pick up my front leg, my back leg. I can shoot off this, I can change levels. So I don't want to be too short, legs together, too long. It makes it very hard to transfer my weight. It's hard to kick from this position as well. So a little bit shorter, a gap in between. Front foot is pointing forwards, back foot about 45 degrees pointing out. And I can move it easily in every direction with my hands covering my head, elbows tucked as well. When I'm moving in my stance, it's important I try and keep that left leg forward, that right leg behind me. Really do I want to square up and put my feet together, and I never really want to cross my feet as well. My balance isn't too good. So this general rule is going to keep you in good shape, okay? Whichever way I want to walk, that foot is going to lead the way. So if I want to walk forwards, my front foot steps first. Backwards, my back foot steps back. If I go left, it's my left foot first and the right follows. Same with the right. If I want to go right, step right, and then drag it across. So I'm avoiding bringing my feet together, and I'm avoiding crossing my feet over. I've always got that little bit of gap in any direction I go, forwards, backwards, side to side, I've always got that gap. I don't need to cover too much distance with just one step, no big steps. I get caught long, it's hard to shift my weight. So I can take my time, I can just little short steps forwards, Backwards, left, right. When we're striking, there's three basic principles that if we stick to, we're going to do pretty well. Okay? Number one is when we're punching, it's always the body that throws the arm. By that, I mean the mechanics of a punch. So when I, when I throw my punch, I don't just want it to be my arm, I want to use my whole body. So it's important I use my hips and my shoulders. So the right stroke, for example, if I just throw it here like this, I'm not going to have any power, any reach, anything. Okay, so using my hips, using my shoulders, the body turns, and then it's the arm that goes. And this principle we can use for pretty much any punch. If I hook, just the arm, not much out of it. If I use my body, use my body to throw the arm, we're gonna get a lot more power, better shape, better balance, everything out of the punch. So number one, it's always the body that throws the arm. Always turning, using the hips and the shoulders. Principle number two, my hips always want to be over my shoulders. If I get caught reaching, leaning, I'm always going to be off balance. I'm never going to be in a good position to counter or land another strike. So always in good position. Shoulders all over, always over the top of my hips. So when I throw a punch, I'm not reaching. If I want to close distance, I'm going to use my footwork to close the distance. I'm not going to stay here and lean forward. So even here, good positioning not leaning forward too much. I don't want to be tipping over on the front foot here like this. Principle number three, I don't want to lose sight of my hands. That can mean from the beginning of a punch, if I wind up, I 
put my hand behind me, I can't see that, that's no good. It's gonna to take too long to hit the target and it's telegraphed as well. Same on the other way through. So as I land the punch, I swing through, I can't see my hand, I'm out of shape, I'm off balance. So when I finish my punches or when I start my punches, I can always see it. It doesn't have to be a big shot. I can always see my hands. I'm not gonna pull back too much, leave myself open and out of shape. Jab is one of the most important punches you're going to use. It's going to, you're going to use it to set up a lot of things, to defend a lot, to keep someone at bay, to set up your takedowns and all your other power punches. So it's really important that we get it uh, used to good effect. So when we use our jab, we want full extension, all the way out, and the hand is slightly turned over. So the thumb is slightly turned down. I don't want to finish the punch short, here like this, like a T-Rex. Fully extended. The shoulder is protecting my chin. Full extension. My trail hand is covering tight. With these gloves, it's, it's nice. We can protect a lot of the face. With the MMA gloves, we haven't got it much at all. So I like holding the front of the head, really covering as, as, as much as I can with my elbow tucked. Try not to bow and arrow. By bow and arrow, I mean the elbow flaring or the hand coming down. So we want good arm position. On the trail hand every time. Full extension, thumb slightly turned over, the shoulders protecting and the retraction comes all the way back. I don't need to lean on this. If I'm covering distance, I can take a little step with the lead leg. It's important when we jab as well that I don't step across too much. If I end up sideways, I'm open to kicks and takedowns. If anything, I'm going to try and keep my knee turned out a little bit, so I can make a little side step, or if I want to go forwards, my knee's not going to turn in too much. On this side. So it's important we get it right and stay in shape when we throw it. So remember the principle, we want to keep our shoulders over our hips and we don't want to lean too much. We want to keep good shape all the way through the punch. Again, with the principle, it's the body that throws the arm and I'm always in shape. Just like the jab, I want full extension, slightly turned over, shoulders protecting the chin and my trail hand is covering high and tight. Whether you put it on the side or in the front, that's up for you. That's for you to decide. And the retraction is exactly the same. With the right straight, I've got a lot more hip movement to add. So on my back foot, pivot on the ball of my foot and push it through. Retraction comes back right away. That hip and shoulder always turning through and then the arm travels and it comes back the same way. another power punch that we can really use to add a lot of power to our strikes okay so again we want to be using our hips we don't just want to swing the arm don't think of it as a, a, a huge shot if we use the, the hips and the shoulder we'll get enough power okay so when we land that hook generally we want a good line we want the elbow up we don't want to finish low here there's not much power behind it so the elbow is up again the trail hands high and tight with the elbow covering and we can pivot a little bit on that on that lead foot. I don't mind if you have thumb towards, thumb up as personal preference. I've got a little bit more preference towards thumb towards. I think it keeps that elbow up a little bit and we concentrate more on hitting with the knuckle part. Sometimes when we go thumb up, we can get a little bit, la little bit lazy, the elbow stays down and we end up slapping, which in MMA isn't necessarily a problem with boxing, you'll get told off. We really want to turn it over elbow up high, a little bit of pivot, and the trail hands up high as well. The 
for dealing with the uppercut, again, we don't want to put ourselves out of the position. The natural thing to do with some guys to get power is to really pull back on the arm. That's not what we want to do. We just want to dip a little bit, put the body in position, and then throw the punch. Of course, the angle of it matters. We don't want to be out too wide. This is an uppercut, so we're going right through the middle. Your range is important as well. Sometimes we're in really close and it's coming straight up. Sometimes we want to get a little bit further. One thing we don't want to do is bring it back towards us. So with the uppercut, I put myself in position first, I dip a little bit, and it comes up through the middle again. I'm pivoting off the back foot, just like the right straight, and I'm in good shape when I land. It's important that when we do this as well, we don't lift off. Again, I don't want to lose sight of my hands. I want to stay in good position. Yeah. When you hit it, palm towards, always hitting with the, the knuckle part of the hand. Retraction is just the same. 